Uh, good evening and welcome back to the Wednesday evening webinar uh, in which we are joined by colleagues from the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Pakistan. I am most grateful uh, to Professor Mahmoud uh, Aiz, Vice President and Director of the Residency Programme and Professor of Surgery at the Services Institute of Medical Sciences in Lahore, uh, to Professor Khalid Masood Gondal, who was Vice President of the College and Director General of International Relations of the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Pakistan, and he is also Vice Chancellor of the King Edward University Hospital in Lahore. Uh, the King Edward Hospital has connections with Ireland. Uh, it was first recognised by Dublin University or Trinity College. And also one of its teaching hospitals is Mayo Hospital after the Earl of Mayo uh, and not the Mayo Brothers uh, from Rochester, Minnesota. And finally, we have a presentation from Professor Bilquis Shabir, uh, who is a chairperson of the uh, telemedicine project uh, that has been undertaken in the King Edward University Hospital. Uh, so I hand you over now uh, to uh, Professor Aiz and colleagues in the College of Surgeons, a College of Physicians and Surgeons in Pakistan. Can I return uh, to uh, Professor Gondal and our apologies uh, at, at this end for the long delay in getting back to you, but I hope now that all the gremlins are out of our works and that we look forward to hearing your presentation. The slides there, okay, we're ready. So should I uh, start? Uh, do please. Now, uh, this is the presentation from College of Physicians in Pakistan. As uh, I was just mentioning, College of Physicians in Pakistan is the main postgraduate body of the country, providing over 80% specialist need to this country. Through 35,000 specialist doctor and over 25,000 postgraduate training. And a college, uh, next, next, the college has got the mechanism of accreditation of the hospitals and the supervisor. The hospital accredited by the college, they are 319. 72 are the overseas hospital, mainly in UK, Ireland, Nepal, and in the Middle East. Whereas in Pakistan, they are 443. The main are in the province of Punjab, 143 followed by Sindh, KPK, Balochistan, and AJK. Next, please. Now, the number of the approved supervisor, they are 4,291. Overseas are 166, and rest are uh, in Pakistan, over 4,000, mainly in the public sector, 2,000 plus, private sector, 1,000 plus, and Pakistan Army, 625. And similar is the distribution of provinces, uh, main chunk with the province of Punjab, followed by Sindh, KPK, Balochistan, and AJK. Next, please. Now, the number of the registered trainee, they are 27,899. 265 are overseas, and rest are in the Pakistan, public, private, and armed forces in all these four provinces. In these 265 training, they are mainly in the Ireland and the UK. The detail in the Ireland, I'll be sharing the next slide. And I've only meant, uh, mentioned there are two programs. One is the junior fellowship and second is the senior fellowship program. In the junior fellowship program, after formative assessment, intermediate module examination, the candidate, they go there for two years and then they compulsorily, they have to come back to Pakistan and all the Irish postgraduate residents, they are reporting back to Pakistan. Similarly, in UK, this, this scheme is successfully going on. We started this scheme in 2011 in Ireland, and that is going on successfully. Next, please. I think this very important slide, although the ratio of male population in Pakistan is over 50%, but as far as the post-registration is concerned, the 57% of the postgraduate residents, they are female, over 15,000 and over 11,000, they are the male. Next. Now, like the CANMED program and the American program and the Irish program and the UK program, the CTSP has got competency-based medical education. The STAR program, we have streamlined during the last one decade, our induction, the curriculum, the training variation that has been addressed through 
the electronic monitoring system and evaluation that has been updated. Next. The CPSP has got, has got the support system. Next, please. So this is the support system of CPSP. We've got over 14 regional centers. They are the replica of the college. And uh, then the headquarters that is in the Karachi. Next, please. Now, as far as the overseas uh, center they are concerned, we have started from Saudi Arabia and Nepal, and currently we are having our sub center in uh, Birmingham and uh, the Dublin, where our postgraduate residents they are getting the training, and we are monitoring through the ELOG system. Next, please. Now, this is the update of the training. My friends were mentioning about the CPSP HEC system. We started this in 2012. And then the first batch that reported in 2013, and then onward the scheme is going on very successfully. And the effect of the cover that is just in front of us, the scheme started with the 84, but because of the COVID, the number are, uh, I think they are now the 50%. The last year, 43 residents, they reported to the Ireland, and now we have selected 54. But they are waiting for the clearance from Irish Medical Council. We started initially in the eight discipline and we expanded that program to the 11 discipline. And the feedback of these trainees is the excellent feedback because when I conducted the study of the first and the second batch, they said we have been exposed to the good environment, good technology. We have learned the professionalism and ethical practices. And as far as the hand on practices concerned, they have got a little bit concerned with the Irish uh, training bodies, they are addressing that issue. All these centers, they have got a very good video connectivity that we are using for various uh, uh, meetings, securities, and others. Next, please. Now, uh, in the training model, the main uh, things which is being uh, given the uh, importance, that is, along with the training, the clinical services and the research. Next. This is the competency based of uh, model of college of physicians surgeon where the patient care that revolves around the communication skills, teamwork, research, knowledge, critical thinking, technical skill, advocacy, advocacy, pedagogy, and professionalism. And this is our own, our own, own innovation, and I think this is like the Canberra program of Canada and your program at Ireland and UK. The roadmap of our postgraduate trainee is uh, uh, they do their post uh, the undergraduate under like MBBS, BDS, uh, after doing the house job, they appear in FCPS part one examination. After clearing the part one examination, they are registered with the college. They get training for two years and then there's a formative assessment. And after the next two to three years, there's a summative assessment. So the college has got first fellowship program four to five year in 46 discipline and in the 30 plus discipline there is a second fellowship program that is of seven uh, years five plus two the current contribution of college of physicians is in pakistan the college has given to this country over 38,000 specialists 28,000 they are the fellows and over 10,000 they are the member and we are providing the fellowship program in 75 different disciplines membership in 22 different disciplines. Next. Now, as far as the examination is are concerned, the college is conducting 276 examination in an year. They are the fellowship examination, part one and two, membership examination, examination related to the medical education and the hospital administration and intermediate module examination. Next, please. Now, we introduced the e-log in 2008 and implemented in 2011. Mm -hmm. And through this ELOG system, we are uh, trying to address the issue of variation of training. I don't want to discuss in the detail of the ELOG because this takes another half an hour. We will discuss on some other occasion. This is the dashboard where the competency is the training that uh, I think that enters the competency that is approved or not approved for discussion. And all the information, the prospectors, they are there on the portal of the training. Next, please. The college has introduced now the online examination. We are conducting this online examination for the last two to three years, starting from part one, then shifting to the intermediate model examination. And now we are shifting that online examination to the FCBS part two next. This is how the 
our headquarter monitors various examination and various centers where the online examination that is going on and there's full proof security and the secrecy and transparencies now uh, the how the training is going on during the covid our ex vice president professor mahmud ayaz and national director of the residency program is going to throw light upon the training during the covid okay um, thank you very much uh, professor khan subhandal uh, for providing me uh, this opportunity and with me we have got our uh, director and control of examinations who is responsible for conducting the examinations all over in pakistan professor slide number 22 and professor ibrar ashraf is with me so can we go on to slide number 22 now yes so um so um, are you with me now so the question which was posed to us was that how covid 19 has affected the college of physicians and surgeons of pakistan in particular with regard to training and examinations so um, i and professor brar are going to jointly have this presentation because a uh, few of the queries would be answered by professor brar because he is responsible for all the logistics for the examinations and controlling the examinations all over in pakistan and as just told you that professor khan god has just told you that uh, we conduct uh, 276 examinations uh, uh, throughout the year which means that almost one exam every day if we leave out the holidays so can have the next slide please so uh, uh, let me uh, deliberate on the pre covid uh, 19 statistics that is in year 2019 as uh, professor kamsu godal has told you uh, a short while ago that uh, we have got induction of the training the curriculum and then we have got the training and monitoring and finally the evaluation so i'm going to touch upon these four uh, topics leaving aside the curriculum so what happened in uh, 2019 in the pre covid 19 era next slide please okay so you can see that uh, in um, in this uh, pre covid uh, uh, 19 area uh, you can see that the total number of inductions which we had was about uh, 6220 in uh, in one year now uh, uh, this we take inductions twice a year one is in january uh, of the year and another is the month of july of that year so you can see that we initially had 6920 inductions in year 2019 next slide please and uh, we uh, as a part of the training of the uh, trainees uh, we actually conduct uh, workshops uh, five workshops have to be done by the trainees uh, by the department of medical education and uh, you can see that uh, we conducted uh, 739 workshops in one year uh, to the department of medical education all over in pakistan next slide and the next group of workshops is done by the advanced skills department the director of the advanced skills department uh, is me myself and uh, jointly uh, directed by professor ibrar ashraf can we move on to the next slide and uh, if you see the statistics uh, uh, in the advanced skills department in year 2019 we actually had the uh, uh, skills workshop for 420 we conducted 420 skills workshops can i have the next slide please okay you can see that uh, in the um, uh, year 2019 the workshops done by the advanced skill department we conduct five different workshops for the advanced skills and uh, we conducted about 420 workshops uh, in year 2019 now slide number 27 okay and you can see that uh, uh, in the examinations which were conducted in year 2019 uh we hold examinations in fcps part 1 the intermediate module the fcps part 2a and fcps part 2b and then the membership examinations so you can see from the statistics that in one year 56402 trainees appeared for the for these examinations slide number 28 
Now, I'll just uh, put a brief uh, light on the commerce statistics uh, during 2020. What happened to us in year 2020? So can I have slide number 29? So in, uh, from 23rd March 2020 up to 31st of May 2020, we had to actually close down our, our, uh, our central office in Karachi and then the 12 regional centers all over in Pakistan because a severe wave of COVID was hitting our country. So through the government orders, uh, we also decided that we should actually shut down our institution and we kept our working to bare minimal level. We kept the institutions open, but uh, the working staff had to go home and only the bare minimum staff had to be kept there just to do the day-to-day -day maintenance. So academic work was stopped almost. Next slide, please. The college was then reopened after lockdown uh, by following the COVID-19 guidelines. Slide number 31. Okay, uh, so you can see these two notifications uh, on slide number 31, uh, where we can actually uh, see that uh, since the college is basically uh, uh, formed through an act of parliament, so we have to follow the government guidelines as well. So we had to, you know, shut down the college and then reopen the college following the COVID-19 guidelines. Slide number 32. Okay, so uh, considering the uh, problem with the COVID-19, uh, a certain waiver was given to the trainees. And this waiver was that the trainees who submitted dissertation online, they were allowed to sit in the examination. Uh, the number of e-logs, the minimum number of e-logs which the candidate had to upload through the e-log portals, they were also reduced because the number of uh, patients in the hospitals were also reduced as far as the general surgery was concerned. And the trainees were also given a choice not to sit in the examinations and carry forward the examination fee to the next examination term because many of the trainees were, uh, uh, you know, becoming COVID positive. So we gave them an opportunity to appear in the next examination and we carried forward their fee. And uh, we did not deduct any amount of fee from them. Next slide, we slide 33. So you can see that uh, the total inductions in year 2020 were 5,402, which uh, were reduced by almost uh, 1,500 as compared to year 2019. Slide number 34. And you can see that the workshops conducted by the Department of Medical Education uh, reduced to 648 from 739. And then, you know, the workshops conducted by the advanced skills department was most severely hit. Uh, you can see that the, the uh, can we move on to slide number 35 now? Okay, the, uh, the advanced skills department workshops, uh, these five or six workshops which we conduct, they were most severely hit because in these workshops, most of the circumstances we needed to have a one-to-one -one contact with the, with the supervisor and the trainee as well. So um, uh, Professor Ibrahim Ashraf uh, was very instrumental in working with us, who's sitting uh, right here with us. And uh, he was looking after all the workshops, but one workshop which we thought which was very, very necessary uh, was conducted very, very effectively. And that is the basic life support uh, workshops for the providers. And we, you can see that out of the 337 workshops which we conducted, 303 workshops were from the basic life support. And uh, I think that we will uh, reserve this uh, for Professor Garash to comment later on that how did he manage all this. And uh, next slide, slide number 36. And you can see that in year 2020, uh, we were able to conduct the examinations and the number of the trainees which appeared in the examinations were 55,750, a very slight reduction because most of our examinations, the chunk of and the majority of the examinations were being held online. So uh, the government allowed us to have these online examinations following the COVID protocols. So you can see that the number of the uh, trainees who were taking the examinations did not reduce uh, you know, much. 
So slide number 37. So I'm going to now, uh, talk about a brief statistics in the year 2021 because you're almost halfway through in the year 2021. So can we now move on to slide number 38? And you can see that the induction up till now has been quite all right. Uh, we have not stopped inducting our trainees. And in the year 2021, in the January 21, uh, 2021 session, we uh, inducted 4,656 trainees. The number is slightly higher because there were many trainees who were not able to join training last year because of the COVID restrictions. So they opted for joining the training uh, this year when the, uh, when, when the COVID was relatively much under control. Can we have slide number 38? So you can see that uh, the workshops which have been conducted by the Department of Medical Education up till now is 259. So we are back to almost our uh, you know, proper functioning because this is uh, almost mid-year and we are nearly up to the half of the landmark which we want to achieve. And same is almost true for the workshops conducted by the Advanced Skills Department. Can we move on to slide number 40? And you can see that uh, in the um, Advanced uh, Skills Department, we were able to conduct 140 uh, workshops where we trained 1,734 trainees. And once again, the basic life support course uh, was the major chunk and uh, we conducted 104 workshops for that. And finally, uh, up to now we have been conducting examinations. We had to stop for the last 15 days just because of the recent third wave of COVID. And, uh, but still, we, we can see from the statistics that um, up to 29,391 trainees have been actually uh, gone, through, uh, gone through these examinations. Next slide, please. The slide number 41. Yes, uh, this is the uh, final number of trainees who have taken up the examinations uh, conducted up till uh, the, uh, uh, the middle of April. And this is 29,391 uh, people have uh, participated in the examinations. So uh, now you can uh, see that uh, there has been, uh, you know, a lot of innovations as far as the CPSP is concerned. And now I'm going to request uh, Professor Haid Masood to deliberate upon uh, the most recent. Uh... Yes, I think uh, our uh, in charge of the COVID, uh, King Edward Medical University and College of Physicians Surgeon, faculty member of medicine, Professor Bilkis Shabir is there uh, to discuss uh, uh, the current statistic of COVID. I'm very grateful to the President, Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland, uh, Professor Khalil Masood Bundal, Professor Mahmoud Ayaz, and Professor Brar for giving me this opportunity to uh, talk on this forum, um, where I'm uh, uh, representing two of the most prestigious institutes of Pakistan. One is College of Physician, Physician and Surgeons as a faculty member of the uh, Department of Medicine and uh, as chairperson in Department of Medicine at King Edward Medical University in charge telemedicine King Edward Medical University. King Edward Medical University being the oldest uh, uh, institute in the subcontinent of carrying a history of more than 160 years. So um, uh, talking about King Edward Medical Universities, it is affiliated with seven other hospitals and uh, out of these three hospitals are collectively currently as well as during the last one year been serving for COVID. Uh, we have been catering more than 500 patients at a time and out of them about 110 patients on uh, uh, ventilators. Uh, now um, being very brief, uh, Einstein said that with every in the middle of every difficulty there's an opportunity. And I think COVID was the difficulty which brought us with an opportunity, which you will see in the next slide. The Department of Telemedicine. Telemedicine services, uh, if you could move on to the next slide, 
uh, telemedicine services were offered and initiated by the governor of Punjab, next please, uh, who is also the chancellor of uh, King Edward Medical University and all the medical universities of Punjab. It was the 12th of March that he decided that since the first wave of COVID is coming up, why not, and the OPDs are closed, why not come up with telemedicine, which he had seen during his 36 years of stay in the UK. Uh, that was when uh, he called all the vice chancellors of uh, various medical universities, King Edward Medical University being one of them, and that was when this telemedicine department came into being and it was inaugurated, you can see in the picture, on the 19th of March, 2020. And at that time, next please, um, at that time, uh, the plan of the Chancellor was to offer Corona services. But it was the vision of uh, my teacher and my mentor, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Khalid Masood Gondal, that if you could offer tele-corona services, why not tele-OPT, which were being closed at that time, as uh, Dr. Shamin Qureshi has mentioned, due to the overload of patients and the fear of uh, uh, infectivity across the patients as well as the medical staff. So we started off with telemedicine, telesurgery, telegynecology, telepediatrics, telepulmonology, telecardiology, teledermatology, telenutrition, and last but not least, telepsychiatry. Next, please. And then, as problems came up, we came up with tele-vaccination, tele-nutrition, and also, um, uh, inshallah, in the at the end of this month, we are coming up with a teleobesity clinic as well. These are the numbers which we shared on the various websites and various uh, links and. Uh, Facebook page of King Edward Medical University. And here you can see that every counter has three uh, modalities of communication. One is landline to, for very poor, underprivileged people because we are a poor country. Uh, then WhatsApp uh, and mobile services and then Skype. So these are three modalities on every counter that were offered to the people of uh, not only uh, Pakistan, but also from across various, uh, uh, across the globe. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I'll show you the st statistics, if you can move on to the next slide, of what telemedicine has been able to offer. Yes, you can see this blue, almost it is 48%. This is the Department of Medicine which has been offering tele-corona and tele-medical services. And the rest are the various other departments which I just mentioned. Next, please. Um, you will see in the next slide that we came across calls. Next slide, please. Um, Chanel, next slide. This is very important. We came across calls from more than 75 regions of the country. And uh, only uh, in the beginning of this month, we marked 10,000 calls. And out of those 10,000 calls, when we analyzed them, only 4,000 were from, from Lahore, and the rest were from um, about 5,000 from other regions of the country. And in this slide, where you can see the red bars, you can see we were receiving foreign calls as well. And uh, you would be very interested in knowing that ma majority of the calls are from the Middle East. You can see Saudi Arabia, Dubai, UAE, Kuwait, Oman, Muscat. These are the areas where our local expats are staying and they have, you know, they are poor people who are working there as laborers. They don't, this service was offered absolutely free of charge. And they were very comfortable with Urdu and Punjabi, the local language. So they were the ones who were calling uh, us. And uh, it's a very interesting thing that we've also received a few calls from UK. And today we received a call from Greece as well. Next. So uh, this uh, generally, uh, the next um, slide will tell you that generally people will, because we always get feedback from, from the doctor attending to the patient and the patient. Uh, so the mutual feedback form and you will be interested in knowing that majority in about 98% were satisfied 
with the knowledge imparted to them. Next, please. Uh, this is just uh, without, uh, you know, um, breaking the confidentiality of the patients. It's just what we were able to, with, within the limited resources, we were able to exchange with the patient. You can see on the left side, this report of a PCR being detected in a patient. They were able to exchange radiographs and you can see the chest X-ray with the CTHRCT. Uh, next slide would tell you, they would share with us the temperature. Next slide, Chanel. Uh, the temperature, the oxygen saturation. If you could have that, yeah. The oxygen saturation, look at this patient. He fell, his saturation fell to 83, which you know marked the point when he should have reported immediately to the nearby health facility, which we advised, and he was able to, and, and uh, we are very really happy that he survived. Uh, besides uh, Corona, we were also having other um, uh, specialties. You can see there's a orthopedics hallucis valgus on one side. Next slide, please. Um, uh, there were some dermatological cases. You can see in the next slide, if Chanel, we can have it. Uh, there is... Chanel, if we can move to the next slide. Uh, yes, uh, in the previous slide, if you could have it, uh, we have some dermatological condition. Yeah, this is a very interesting case where he shared this because it is associated with thrombosis. This was a COVID patient who had digital ischemia. On the left side, this picture shows you. Then there was this uh, tinea, and then there were this uh, ecchymosis. This was about of, of an admitted patients. Next. The next slide is very important because with telemedicine, we were able to communicate. Next, please, Chanel. Uh, we were able to communicate with the affiliated hospitals and the consultants of Mayo Hospital and King Edward Medical University, previous one, please, were able to share their expertise with the ICUs of the affiliated hospital. So this picture was from Court Haja Said Hospital of a remitted patient. And you can see how they were, uh, we were able to offer them advice regarding the care of that specific patient. And he was ventilated at that time and he was extubated. Next, please. And then we were able to share various modalities of treatment. Just sticking on to COVID, this is the uh, chart we would exchange uh, at our nutrition center. And um, uh, this is the spirometry device, which we, which we would explain on the Skype and the WhatsApp video how to use. Next, please. Uh, then the various important positions, which are very, which have it's evidence based that these uh, positions improve the mortality and uh, morbidity rates of COVID patients. So this was easily explained to them by charts. Next, please. Um, the next chart is in Urdu. I'm sorry for that, but this is an, uh, this is the national language. This is about the vaccination schedule. So when we were having the vaccination weeks, there were two weeks which were uh, uh, during the last month. Two weeks were dedicated to vaccination of young children, and this is with this chart we shared with every patient. Whatever the problem they came up with in the Teddy OPD, we shared with them so that any child belonging to any of the family could make use of this. Next, please. And talking about the training and supervision, you know, uh, this technology is definitely not a panacea to the problems of the clinical training of students, definitely. Nor does it generate knowledge per se, but uh, in the current pandemic situation, it definitely allowed the medical univer universities to continue on to the practical uh, uh, learning and um, ensure that the students under training achieve part of the skills, at least remotely. Next slide would be this very interesting slide. Next, please. You would see, next uh, slide, Chanel. You would see there's a patient uh, with, uh, this was a call received from UAE. Um, of a patient at the orthopedic counter, uh, counter where he was, uh, you can see the external fixators and our own vice chancellor, Professor Khalid Masood Gondal, who himself is a surgeon with special interest in orthopedics, is directly counseling the patient as to the further care of the patient. That patient was stranded in UAE because of the uh, uh, 
travel uh, reservations. Next. You can see um, the picture about this, uh, that of Professor Sai also. She is Dean of Preventive Medicine and she has played a very pivotal role in the, in the Department of uh, Telemedicine and the Preventive uh, uh, um, uh, part of it. And you can see she's training her trainees as to how to deliver services at telemedicine on Zoom. You can see there's a discussion going on between myself and Professor Khalid Masood Gondal, and the pulmonology resident is standing with us and he's presenting the case to us. Uh, the picture uh, lower down shows Professor of Dermatology, Professor Ijaz. The case discussed, being discussed is being presented by a trainee of dermatology and it was uh, managed and uh, advised according to uh, protocol. Next slide will show you similar pictures. Uh, it, it's a busy slide, but you can see we are also very busy here. Uh, the first slide shows Professor Sajid Ubedullah, Professor of Medicine, imparting advice to his trainee. Uh, the slide in the center shows myself, my associate professor, my senior registrar. That was a busy day. We had about 80 calls that day, and all of us were busy on the phone. And similarly, the, uh, the slide in the right lower left shows how the trainee is being guided by the specialist as how to advise the, student, uh, the patient. Similar, similarly, the next slide shows senior consultants training their uh, residents. Could you move on to the next uh, slide, Shanel? Yeah. Uh, these are also senior consultants, Professor Adal, Professor Sa uh, Sonia, Professor Villar, Professor Saira, all of them imparting knowledge to their trainees. Next. Now, this is a very interesting slide. What we further um, uh, improv improvised upon was the critical patients. Uh, every night, you can see Professor Harim Sun Gondal on every screenshot. These are three screenshots. These have been taken with permission from the patients. Um, the cases were individually discussed. Medical boards were constituted. So for example, in the middle slide, you can see Professor of Pulmonology here, uh, Professor Khalil Masood Gondal, myself, Assistant Professor of Pulmonology, and the patients whom we are dealing with. And they were uh, guided on WhatsApp on daily basis and monitored, closely monitored. So this was something a further step ahead, which was a pure innovation of uh, Professor Khalid Masood Kondal. And this went on, especially during the, you know, uh, when the uh, crisis hit its peak, especially during the last month. Next, please. This is a very important, the next slide, Chanel, is a very important department we must talk about. Um, Chanel, can you move, can you move to the next slide? Yeah, the the tall professor you see is Professor Ali Madi Hashmi, and Professor Aftab, uh, and Professor um, Nasir Shimran. All of them are professors of psychiatry, and psychiatry was something which was definitely indicated for the patients, for the families, and you can see psychological first aid. This was given at during multiple sessions with the doctors and the nurses and the paramedical staff who were dealing with the patients because all of us went into stress, the, especially during the first wave. So telepsychiatry tele was a very, very pivotal uh, uh, part of the, uh, is a pivotal part of services. And this again is an innovation of Professor Khaled Masood Kondal. Next, please. We have health training sessions. Um, the next slide would show you is a flyer, which uh, is about a telemedicine uh, webinar, which was held in January. The next slide would show you another uh, telemedicine webinar, which was held in April. And you can see the speakers, and we discussed, and uh, we learned. We learned a lot. And uh, COVID has been kind in a way that he it helped us learn a lot, and telemedicine and teleeducation was one of them. Next, please. You can see the happy faces. Next slide is a very interesting slide. You can see the happy faces when Professor Khalid Musul Gondal was talking to the residents and taking their feedback as to how 
they feel about telemedicine and education on telemedicine. And you can see the smile of the faces. And you'll be interested in knowing this was on the eighth day. Next, please. Um, many, we received a lot of um, uh, acknowledgement and a lot of appreciation next uh, from our teachers. The next slide will show you uh, the visits from our ex principals. Uh, I think the oldest um, graduate of King Edward Medical College uh, previously, uh, may Allah grant him health, Professor Khaja Sadek, Professor um, uh, Mahmood Ali Malik, Professor Mahmood Ayaz also came to visit us. Next slide will show you the government officials. Next one. Uh, which include the health minister, the governor of Punjab, who, whose brainchild it was, and the other um, uh, important dignitaries. The next slide would show you visits from the armed forces, which helped us a lot as well. So we received a lot of acknowledgement and support. And you know, whenever there's a time of difficulty, the morals have to be high. And I think these were the people who kept us up, you know, in all these difficult times. Next. Um, throughout all our seven attached hospitals received very strong support from the government, from the governor of Punjab, from the president, and uh, at the same time next, we held, uh, as uh, Professor Fawad Mustafa talked about ongoing online classes and webinars next, we held a lot of uh, international webinars. And uh, with UK, we had uh, Weekly, and especially during the initial days of COVID, we had weekly webinars on case presentations of COVID, and we learned a lot from each other. Uh, this is um, a joint mission with uh, China, Brimia, that is uh, Belt Road International Medical Education Alliance. Next. Uh, this is how, because it started off from Wuhan, the Chinese came over here and they actually, you know, um, uh, taught us how they came out of it. And this is another webinar where our vice chancellor was the chief guest. Uh, the next slide would show us another picture of a webinar. It was a, a webinar from various people from UK, from uh, USA, from Canada, from Australia. Uh, uh, the health minister and the minister of education were the chief guests and we learned a lot uh, during the initial days of COVID next during these webinars and then there were online classes and we held post emergency reviews and mortality morbidity reviews, case presentation journal clubs as Dr. Fuad Musa said, we also continued uh, as per the requirement of College of Physicians and uh, and surgeons of Pakistan, we continue these at King Edward Medical University. Uh, with this, the vision continues. The way forward next would be to, this is the vision of a vice chancellor, to have a, few, have a department of telemedicine on permanent basis, to have a department of infectious disease on a permanent basis, which we still lack in uh, our country. Next. So everything is teamwork, and this is what my mentor and my, my teacher, Professor Khalam Masood Gondal, always tells us. And the last slide tells you all, the next one, who were the people behind all this? The governor of Punjab, you can see in the right first slide, it was his initiative. Professor Zafrullah Chaudhary, President, College of Physicians, Children, Teacher of Teachers, he has been the you know, beacon behind us. And last but not the least, you can see Professor Khalid Masood Gondal, who received the pride, Presidential Pride of Performance Award for his services of COVID. He's receiving them, uh, receiving the reward directly from the President of Pakistan in this picture. Thank you so much for patient learning. Just thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Shabir, and thank you so much for uh, putting together such a, a comprehensive account of uh, the effects of COVID-19 on the teaching in uh, King Edward University Hospital. Um, 
Uh, and also uh, the effect it's had on the College of Physician Surgeons in Pakistan. Uh, we've had a, um, a, a very interesting uh, um, program, and it's interesting for me to have looked up a little bit about uh, the King Edward University uh, in that uh, it was first recognized by Dublin University uh, back in 1868. And of course, you have a Mayo Hospital. It's not named after the Mayo brothers in Rochester, Minnesota, but it's uh, after Lord Mayo, who was, uh, his name was Burke, and he was uh, the uh, Governor General of India, uh, as India and Pakistan was together um, under the British. So there are links uh, there with you uh, as well. Um, can I just uh, say that uh, the presentations today have brought home to me the very strong linkages uh, there are between Pakistan and Ireland, particularly in the medical fraternity. And as I've said earlier, uh, we are hugely indebted to the uh, training um, uh, and the experience that the Pakistani doctors bring to Ireland. I mean, I, mean, I might ask uh, Professor Ayaz, how does the college uh, uh, feel about the loss of actually training opportunities uh, for uh, surgeons? Uh, it's all well and good to do remote examinations, but actually the uh, training to competence is a fundamental concept. Yes, um, um, I totally agree with you uh, because uh, we have been facing this uh, problem and I happen to actually be in contact with a few of my uh, colleagues in USA, uh, two of them in, uh, in Australia and uh, I've got many uh, of my class fellows and my senior colleagues working in UK and, and Ireland. And I think that the situation in uh, Pakistan is no different from those countries as well because the COVID has uh, not only hit uh, hard uh, itself in Pakistan, but it is all over the world. The situation of the, um, of the trainees is almost similar everywhere because, you know, effective lockdowns, they mean that the number of elective cases would be reduced. The, uh, the emergency, because uh, the emergency and the, the surgical oncology had to go on because there was no way to stop that. Uh, so um, uh, the problem was that uh, uh, we have got a, control, uh, a corona ad advisory uh, group, which actually gives us the policy that how are the, how are the, um, the hospitals going to work in these uh, circumstances. And then we have got the NCOC, which is a, a centrally governing body, which issues the instructions. So we have to abide by those instructions. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, as a policy, all the surgical trainees and all the medical trainees, uh, as a group, they had to undergo certain rotations um, throughout their training. So what we did was that we utilized this uh, time period, sending them to uh, their uh, rotational trainings. And these rotational trainings were mostly in three areas. Uh, they, they were not sent to their routine rotations. They were sent to the COVID ICUs. Uh, they were sent to uh, medical ICUs, they were sent to critical care areas, and they were sent to pulmonology departments. So these were the four areas where we sent our uh, trainees for rotations. Uh, during their uh, first initial two years of training, uh, these trainees, they have to actually undergo at least eight months of rotations. So much of their time was spent in rotating in these wards. Though this was not a compensation for their, uh, for their uh, you know, surgical training, but they compensated the, uh, the, uh, uh, the lack of doctors in our society. Uh, we were short of doctors, especially in these areas, in the critical area, area in the COVID ICU areas, in the general medical ICU areas, and in the community. Well, can I thank our colleagues in the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Pakistan for really putting an enormous effort into these presentations. Uh, clearly, there's been a uh, great effort uh, in teaching and extending Teddy medicine uh, during uh, the COVID pandemic, and you are really to be uh, 
uh, congratulated in what you have achieved. We in RCSI greatly value our links with the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Pakistan and are delighted to welcome uh, some of your trainees into our programs here in Ireland. Um, as you will have heard from earlier presentations, our health service in Ireland is very dependent on trainees from Pakistan who come and live and work here. And we hope uh, that this relationship uh, can uh, continue uh, into the future. And indeed, we look forward to closer links. I am very cognizant uh, that you put together this presentation uh, over the weekend following the Festival of Eid. And so we are grateful to you for making this particular effort. And I wish you good evening and thank you. And look, I look forward to the opportunity when travel restrictions allow that I can visit in person uh, the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Pakistan. Thank you.